Hello everyone. Welcome to the next training session of SBF ICO module. In today's training session, we'll be covering the topic of internal order accounting. Internal order accounting, which is one of the sub module of SAP controlling part. In internal order accounting, today we'll be covering overview on internal order accounting, configuration steps, which are divided into five parts. One is activate order management in controlling area, then order master data, creation of internal order and internal order groups then planning and settlement once the configuration are done then we'll be moving to the unit testing part so as to have the testing of the configuration how far and how successful we are in it and after that we'll be we'll be executing few of the internal order processes as well so as to understand how internal order works so moving on to the internal order accounting overview Internal order accounting are normally used to plan, collect and settle the cost of internal jobs and tasks. Internal order accounting is designed for detailed oriented analysis. It deals with the overhead management and is used by most of the manufacturing industries, especially in make to order industry it is very useful. Internal order accounting are used for short term purposes like trade fair, job fairs, etc. Where, whereas the cost centers are used for long term purpose to capture day to day cost. Now internal order accounting is probably one of the most difficult areas within the CO module to understand. Whereas cost center and profit center accounting, which we have already covered in the previous training sessions, have been in mainframe accounting for quite some time, but internal order and the unique properties have been new to many of the organizations even today. Internal order accounting allows you to manage and track the information about the cost at a granular level it is designed for a detailed oriented analysis it allows you to track the information around a production order or a set of production order using internal orders breakup of cost at a granular details to settle them to the appropriate cost object assignment and do the numerous other tasks as well. Now let's have a simple example to have a better understanding of how an internal order is used in any organization. So let's say in an organization there are various events such as trade fairs, training seminars, job fairs which occur during the year. Now let's assume that for a second, for some time, that these trade fairs or the training seminars are organized by the marketing department which have a marketing cost center of the organization in SAP. Therefore, in this case, marketing cost center is responsible for all the trade fair costs involved in the trade fairs part. All these trade fairs costs are posted to the marketing cost centers. Now, once these trade fairs are done, suppose there are multiple trade fairs in it, and now if the management wants an analysis of the cost incurred for each of the trade fairs organized by the marketing cost center or the marketing department, how would the marketing manager get this piece of information according to them. The cost center report would not give this information or this piece of information to the manager. The cost center can just give the the cost incurred on the different trade fairs but the cost center cannot bifurcate the 
cost of all different trade fairs as per their respective part. Now this is where internal order steps in. If you go through all the cost center reports, this information is not really available since all the costs are posted to the cost center. But in case of internal order, SAP therefore provides the facility of using internal orders which comes in a real handy in such situations. In the above scenario, the controlling department would then need to create an internal order for each of the trade fairs organized. So each trade fair will have its own internal order. The cost incurred for each of the trade fairs will be posted to their respective internal orders during the month. At the month end, these costs which are collected in the internal order will be settled from these orders to the marketing cost centers. Thus, the controlling person is now in a position to analyze the cost for each of the trade fair separately. The internal order is used to monitor the cost for such short term events or activities. It helps in providing more information than that is provided on the cost centers. It can be widely used for various purposes. Now let's some other, take some other practical example where internal order is more helpful. Like as said that it is more useful in make to order industries where the organization or a, or a particular manufacturing organization entity receives orders from different companies for the products to be manufactured. So when products are manufactured on orders, each order received are assigned a particular internal order from SAP. So in that case, every order cost will be tracked in that internal order. And if you want to know what is the total cost of production for that particular order that can be generated with the help of internal order and can be can be taken for the analysis purpose. So in this way internal order is used so as to have the the reports for a respective job or activity which has been held for that particular organization part. So once at the month end or the year end or once the activity is over these internal orders values are then settled to the cost centers. And by this, the manager or the management is in a position to analyze that what should be the plan cost and what is the actual cost of the orders which has been manufactured or what is the actual cost of that particular event or jobs or activities involved. So this is where internal order accounting is very very helpful. Now moving to the next are the configuration steps. As on the screen, the first is activate order management in controlling area. Then we'll be moving to the next part is order master data, which involves four of the configuration steps within the master data. Then there are creation of internal order groups and creation of internal orders. Then planning. Planning includes maintain user defined planner profiles maintain planner profiles for overall planning then settlement where the internal order has to be settled at the end of the month or at the end of the year the settlement includes maintain allocation structures maintain settlement profiles and maintain number ranges for settlement documents so let's move on move to the configuration steps one by one 
Moving to the first configuration step that is activate order management in controlling area. So in this activate internal order accounting in for the controlling area prior to beginning the configuration. So what we need to do is in this each module in controlling has to be activated for the controlling area prior to the configuration steps. So you need to activate the order management in the or controlling area before starting the configuration for internal order accounting. This particular configuration is the same has the same nod or the path where we maintain the controlling area. So the path is on the screen. We can revisit that M IMG that is SPRO controlling and in controlling to internal orders and then activate order management in controlling area. So let's move on to the SAP system. Let me log in. So now we can enter. So as we have logged in to the system now we can move on to the SPRO enter. Now we need to go to the SAP reference IMG. Then we need to move on to the controlling part. And now in the controlling part we need to go to internal orders. So we can execute internal orders over here. And within internal orders you can see the option activate order management in controlling area. So the first step is to activate the order management in the controlling area. So we can go and we can execute this option over here. Now once we have moved on to the next screen, now we can select our own controlling area. For con searching the controlling area, we can go to this position and we can, we can put the controlling area code which we have created that is Z100 enter. Now you can have a look that you have got your controlling area over here. So we can select the controlling area and now we can double click on the activate component. So once you have got your controlling area you need to select the controlling area and then you need to double click on activate component control indicators. So once you double click on to this it will take you to the next screen. So now you can see that there is a next screen where you can find there are a couple of different components which we even have discussed in cost center accounting where we activated the cost center accounting in this case. So over here now in this case we have to activate the order management. Order management refers to the internal order accounting. So you can see over here the internal order is already active on the screen as when we created the controlling area we activated these components in one go at the very beginning. Else if you don't activate these options in one go at the beginning while defining the controlling area in that case you have to revisit these steps one by one every uh, with each and every module in controlling and you have to activate those options. So as on the screen now we have already activated the order management. So once you have activated these options over here now we can move and we can Okay, and you need to select this variances as well over here as on the screen in below. So you have to activate the order management over here and we can select this variances over here on the screen as well. So you need to select both of them and apart from that if you want you can select these other options like cost objects and these two are not needed uh, so we'll leave them blank as of now. Now we can move and we can save the screen. So once we save the screen the configurations will be saved to the request. As you can see it has been saved. Okay. So the data was saved as you can see. So now moving back. 
to the IMG screen. So this is how you have activated the order management in controlling area with the path as well as otherwise there is a transaction code for that as well that is OKKP. So you can use either the path or the transaction code with whichever you are comfortable with. Now we are done with this particular configuration step so we'll be moving to the next configuration step that is the order master data and in order master data we'll be defining order types then maintaining the number ranges for orders define order layouts and define model orders moving on to the define order types an order type contains control information that you need for managing orders you have to assign every order to an order type or else you can say that an order an internal order is created under an order type an order type is used to storing various control parameters and various defaults while creating an internal order the order type is client specific which means that every order type can be used in all the different controlling areas a number range is assigned to the internal order the order type is the central figure in internal order accounting the internal type determines what information can be held how it will be settled planning and budgeting parameters authorizations what other master data is required and how it will be displayed on the screen when developing the order type you should begin the process with the keeping the ends in mind order type configuration is an interactive process remember that all the order types are controlling area independent so changes made here will be felt everywhere that is in every controlling area so let's see how we can configure the order types the path is on your on your screen the menu path has been defined as well as the transaction codes are there either of these two any of them can be used we'll be moving with the path so let's move on to the SAP system we need to go to the SPRO transaction first enter and then we need to go to SAP reference IMG now from IMG we need to go to controlling then internal orders so we'll be moving to the controlling over here and then expanding it and then we'll be moving to the internal orders and then expanding the internal orders and within internal order we need to go to order master data and in order master data define order types so this is their order master data we need to expand this over here and then the first option that is define order types so the path is from controlling to internal orders then to order master data and define order types now let's execute the define order type step now executing it and it will take us to the next screen as you can see on the screen now so to create the order type we need to go to new entries so let's click on to the new entry button over here on the screen so once I click on to the new entries it asks for the order category now in this we have to enter the category of the order type being developed so let's see what are the different list of order categories as on the uh, on this so we need to expand the list there are around 13 optional choices as on the screen there are internal order, actual calculation orders, model order, CO production order, QM order, PP order, network, process order and all. But what we need to take is the first one that is 01, the internal order for controlling. So you need to select the 01 over here. Once you have selected the 01, now next press enter key to open the create order type screen that is the next screen so click on to the enter once I enter it 
took us to the next screen from where we will be creating the order type. At this point, if you want to change the order category now, the order category which we have defined, once an order type is defined, you cannot delete the order type or even you cannot uh, change the order category once an order type has been defined. If you want to change the order category in the order type, you need to delete the order type first and you have to create the a new order type for that. So moving on to this particular part now, the first is the order type option over here. So in this we have to enter the ID for the new order type. The ID can be up to 5 alphanumeric characters in length. So let's take the ID over here as 1100 and the description can be taken up over here as real internal order type 1200. 1200 refers to the company code for which this order type has been defined. Now moving to the next now is the number range. So number range is not defined as of now. We will be defining that in the next couple of steps to, to move with. Moving to the next is the general parameters. General parameter section of the order, you can see the fields for settlement profile is there, planning profile, budgeting profile is there. We need to assign each of these to the order type successfully so as to complete the configuration of this part. So let's move on to the general parameter. The first one is the general pro parameters that is settlement profile. Now in the settlement profile, we need to select the ID over here again and we can select the ID from the list of options which are available to us. So we can expand the list of settlement profile IDs and we can see which we can use. So there are a number of different profiles but the one which we would be needing to take over. So in the, out of these all settlement, the settlement profile which we need to assign is 9090 that is must not be settled. So this is the order type which we have to select over here on the screen. So once we have selected the order settlement type over here on the screen, now we can move on to the next step that is planning profile. Moving to the planning profile now, we can go to the options again over here on the screen. We can create our own planning profile also or we can take the one which is already on the screen. So right now the profile which we will be taking for planning profile is 00001 that is general budget plan profile. So this is what you need to select over here on the screen. Now moving to the next is the budget profile and now in the budget profile the profile will control budgeting views and availability control activations so for that again we need to go for the list of different budget profiles available and out of these we will be taking the general budget profile so that is what been selected over here on the screen then moving to the object class, this will assign the internal order to a further group of object classes. The groups are as on your screen, overhead cost or investment or production or profit analysis. So the one which we will be taking as of now is the overhead cost as on the screen. Now moving to the next is uh, functional area. So we don't need the functional area over here. Functional area is used when the cost of sales accounting is there in the system. The next is model order. Now model order is one which we have to define. So we will come back to this particular part once we define the order type and then we'll be assigning the order type onto this screen. So if during the internal order creation you wish to always copy a specific order we need to enter the model order over here. In that case, during the order creation, SAP will automatically copy the active fields from this reference that is the model order into the new order active fields. 
So what model number does is it works, it plays the role as a reference and whenever uh, an internal order is created, most of the relevant fields are copied from the model number to the internal order and that is what this has been used for. So we'll see that later on, we'll come back to this again. Now moving to the next part now is the control indicators on the other side. So in the control indicators, you can find one as a CO partner update. This field determines how an order will post during CO allocations, that is the controlling allocations. This setting will influence the number of data records maintained in the order accounting. There are three choices which are available. The semi-active is a default assignment by the SAP system. Else you can go for these of any of these three three options as a as an update. The first one is active. In ranking from higher to lower with reference to the number of records maintained during the allocation, active ranks number one. A total record will be maintained for all the parties if the CO partner update is active. Semi-active is the second highest in the number of records posted. During order to order allocation such as settlement for allocation between an order and a cost center, these all details are been taken up over here in the semi-active part and non-active means no total record is maintained for the receiving object regardless of whatever whether there is an internal order or not. So what you need to take over here on the screen is the active part. So we'll be taking the active part over here and we need to select the commitment management activate the commitment management, revenue posting and integrated planning. So commitment posting, if activated, then the commitments such as purchase requisitions and purchase orders can be tracked on the order type. Also, if we activate the revenue posting, then you can plan on tracking the revenues on the order type. But if you don't activate the revenue postings, SAP will return with an error when you try to post a revenue element in the internal order. Integrated planning. If the planning integration is selected here, plan data can be automatically passed on to the profit center accounting as well. So this is what you need to select on these parameters. Now moving on to the next is, now is the status update. So moving on to the status update, we don't need to do anything over here in the status update part. No changes are to be required in this particular case. The next is over here is the archiving. So basically archiving is uh, section is responsible for deleting or archiving the internal order master records. The archiving or deleting of order master record from your data should be a part of your overhaul archiving strategy that is the organizational archiving strategy. Now in this case there are two options residence time 1 and residence time 2. This is a part of the archiving strategy how they want to archive the data related to internal order master records from the SAP system. So we don't need to do that as of now. We just need to do this much and there is one more field over here. We can see that there are two options in this case. Collective order without automatic goods movement and collective order with automatic goods movement. Now if you have a collective order process activated in the internal order process, the setting will control whether the link between the production order and the collective order will allow automatic goods movement between individual levels of a collective order. So if you select the with automatic goods movement, in that case it will allow the automatic goods movement between the, the production order and the, and the collective orders. So that is this part. So what we, we suggest in this case that you should take collective order without automatic goods movement. So this is what we have went for the assignment. Once we have done these all parameters have been assigned, we can move on to save the transaction so that the internal order has been created. So it gives the message number range not processed because number range we will be assigning in the second step.
continue it ok and now you can see the customization or the configuration have been taken up in the request number and you can see the data was saved so the order type 1100 has been created in the SAP system so this is how you need to create your own order types in the SAP system but moving to the next now is that uh, okay internal order types the internal order which we have just created order types the internal order types are of basically four types one is production order next is profitability orders another is investment order and the last is overhead orders so these are the these are different order types which can be created in the SAP system as we created a normal order type that is 1100 so that is a part of internal order type moving to the next is maintaining the number range for orders so number range assignment is made centrally for all the orders with its order type as discussed in the last step that order type uh, is always been assigned with the number range each order is assigned to a group via its order type several order type can be assigned to the same number range group with the same number interval there are two types of number intervals one can be internal and one can be external so every order master record must be uniquely identified within its clients by the means of an order number so whatever the order numbers created or the internal order created will have a unique number to it as we used to create number uh, range for the GL number or the customer vendors and others similarly over here we need to create a number range for internal orders each order is assigned to a group that is with its internal order type several order type can be assigned to the same number range as well or they can have a separate number range as well now moving on to the internal and external number range in internal number range allocation the system automatically allocates the next free number from the range of each new order as you create it whereas in the external part the user have to manually assign the number from the given number ranges so that is a part of number range moving on to the number range how we can create it in the SAP system So moving on to the SAP system now to define the number range for the orders the path is on your screen and the transaction code is also there so moving on to the path to the SPRO path you can see the next step over here after defining the order type the very next step is maintain number range for orders so we'll be defining the number range from over here let's execute this option so once I have executed the order now as you can see the order number range screen is there so now we need to go to click on to the groups as on the screen over here maintain groups this field so now in this maintain we need to click on to this groups once I click on to the groups now it will take me to the next screen and in this now we need to go to groups as on the top groups menu over here and in that I need to go to insert so we need to go to this part I hope you can understand that first we went on to groups over here we clicked on to the groups then I need to go on the top over here number range object added go to groups so in that we need to go to this groups option over here and in groups there are three options in insert maintain text and expand so we need to go to the insert part click on to the insert so once I click on to the insert it gives me a new tab where I need to fill the number range number as well as the text so we can define the text over here as real internal order type 1200 the same order type description which we have just defined a while back in the last step 
and we can define the number range from and to so the number range I would be taking over here is 10012199 so if you take this number range for the internal order from this to this that is what you have to define on the screen and then we can move up to over here to insert this particular number range so click on to the insert and once inserted now now we can assign the so now we need to find the internal order type which we just created a while back that is 11001100 so if you drag this down the screen from over here you will find an option as not assigned on the last part on the very low part so you can see there are options as not assigned these are the different order types which has been created and these are not been assigned to any of the number ranges as of now so what we can do is we can assign this number order type that is 1100 which we have just created in the last step so what we need to do is we need to put the cursor on this screen this particular uh, not assigned order type that is 1100 put the cursor on 1100 and then you need to go to the option over here select element as you can see that is one of the option or the second option is that uh, whichever the internal order type you want to assign the number range with you can double click on to that so once you double click you can see it has been highlighted over here so once it has been highlighted now you need to go back again on the upside and now you need to select the internal order to which you want to assign this particular internal order type with so we need to in search the internal order which we have range which we have just created a while back now let's see which that number range is okay this is the internal order type which we have just created and to this this is the number range we have created and this is the internal order type which need to be assigned to this so you can see this has been double clicked and it has been selected and we need to go and select this option over here real uh, real internal order type 1200 once you have selected this now you need to go to click on to element groups so you need click on to element group and you can see now that this 1100 has moved from not assigned to the assigned part so what we did is we assigned the order type to the number range with this option similarly you have to do you have to create the internal order type and then you have to create the number range and you have to assign the internal order type which is not assigned part to this part so this is how you need to do the assignment of internal order type to the number range similarly you can assign other order types as well suppose i am now going to assign zm01 so what you need to do is first you need to double click on to this so that this will be selected once I double click on to ZMM01 you can see it has been now highlighted over here the color has been changed it has been changed to blue from black and now once I have taken this we need to select the number range these are the different number range on your screen so on whichever number range you want to take this order type to you need to select that so suppose I select it again with the real internal order type 1200 and now once I have selected this I need to go to element groups this means assign the element group so it will assign this part over here to the number range so once I click on to this element group now you will see that the change that the internal order type which was been in the not assignment part has moved to the assigned part to the number range so once we have done this now we can save the screen and your number range assignment is been done so this is what you can continue with it now if you want to check the number range assignment for the internal orders then you need to follow the instructions let's see you need to select your internal order over here so once you select this internal order on the screen over here now you need to go to the option over here as a pen mark this it, this means maintain so once you select your number range option over here 
you need to you need to check box this mark and then you need to go to this maintain option over here once you click onto it it will show you your number range so once i clicked onto it you can see your number range has been reflected this was the number range which we have just created uh, just a while back so this is how you can create your number range you can have a look to your number range from this option over here as well and your number range assignment has been completed successfully so now we'll move to the next configuration step that is order layout now order layout defining the it basically refers to defining the layout for the order master data you can assign a layout to each order type so in, in this particular step we will be defining the layout for the order master data in this particular case the system displays the order master data as a tab with a series of tab pages on the tab pages there are group boxes with a series of fields for the order master data the group boxes are defined by the system which has to be taken so let's see it will give you more clarity once we are on the SAP system how this order layout works for the layout purpose it basically refers to the same layout like a screen layout where uh, which fields you want to be keep as a restricted or to be hidden or to be mandatory or optional that can be done on this particular part so let's see the path is there on your screen now the IMG control then internal order and order master data so let's see on the SAP system we are already on the order master data so in that we need to go to screen layout over here and expand so in the screen layout you can see there is an option of define order layouts so this is the order layout we can execute this tab over here this particular step and once you click on it you can see there is one layout already defined on the screen to you now you can define your new layout as well or if you want you can copy it from one which has been created over here on the screen so let's see how we can go for it so for creating your own layout you need to go to this new entries over here so once I went up to this I can define my own layout so suppose I I make the layout mm, name as to be 1100 and I can define it as layout for internal order type 1200 so this is how you need to create once you have created this now you have named it now what we need to do is we need to move on to so we'll be moving up to the next part over here this was layout now we need to go to tab page title so we can select this layout over here and we can move up to the next part okay okay what we need to do first is now we need to save it so let's save this option over here and the layout has been saved so the layout has been created on the screen so you don't have to do much you just have to go to the new entries and then you have to define the code for the layout and the description of the layout on the screen and that's it so this will create the screen layout uh, the order layout for the system for the internal order accounting part so you can see this layout has been created now now you can select this layout over here and you can go to this tab pages titles so once I move on to tab pages titles you will find that the page is blank similarly you will find that the boxes are even blank so we don't need to do anything in this particular part as of now we just need to just create this layout and we have created it now we can move to the next configuration step and the next configuration step is now model orders model orders are not orders in a business sense you can enter them as a reference in order type for creating a normal order model orders only contain default default values and cannot be posted to the model orders are greatly 
simplify the creation of orders this saves your entering data data used repeatedly in orders within an order type this also reduces any incorrect entries or typing errors when you uh, just take a simple scenario like when you create uh, any new internal order all the fields active in the relevant order type are copied from the model order to the new order the model order make the work of entering new orders considerably cheaper the data that recurs in orders from a particular order type is already defined and this reduces the likelihood of errors the order status is not copied from the order model order the new order is given the default status for the relevant order type so it works as a reference where the most of the data are copied from the model order to the internal order which saves your time and efforts for doing the same repetitive work again and again so how we can create a model order let's see so the path is there on your screen again let's see onto the sap system so in the same screen layout you will find after defining the order layout the next option is to define the model orders so we can move on to execute this define model order step once i click onto the option as execute now you will find the screen over here that there are two options onto it one is to create co model order and the next is to change co model order so we'll double click on to the create part first so let's double click on to the create so once i clicked on to the create it asked me the order type so the order type is there the order type is the one which we have created just a while back so let's see the list of different order types on the system so there is only one as of now this is what you need to select over here as default order type so that is these different uh, two dollar marks are there so this has to be taken and once you have taken the order type over here as this double dollar signs now we need to move on to click on to this master data or you can enter on the screen as well so once i enter on to the screen it will take us to the next tab that is set controlling area so in this particular part you need to now first uh, have to assign the controlling area to the order type so that will be z100 continue so now we can see a new screen for creating the model order so in this particular part we first move up to the first tab that is order over here in this we need to define the code for the model order so the the code which will be created over here should must start with a dollar sign so we need to take a dollar sign first of all without dollar you cannot create it so you have to take care that you have to start with the dollar and then you can define the uh, the rest of the code over here so suppose i take the code as 1100 and then you can define the description as well on the screen so the description can be taken up as suppose i take it as ibm inc or llc you can take now moving up to the next is you have to define the company code over here which is a mandatory part and you have to select the object class so the object class to be selected is overhead so these are the two three parameters which you need to select on the screen the rest of the parameter are optional it's up to your discretion whether you want to fill the other parameters or not but the minimum parameter you have to take is the order then the description the company code and the overhead as we have taken up over here so once we take these options now we can move up to the next screen that is control data next tab so moving to the control data in this currency we need to put the currency that is usd so now we have defined the currency we can we can save this screen and the internal order will be defined sorry the model order will be defined for the system 
So let's uh, save this option. So as I saved, now you can see that it has been created and the request will be saved for that. So now you can see the order was created with the number $1100 as on your screen. So now we need to assign this model order to the order type which we defined uh, sometime back in the, in the starting part of the training session. So let's move up to the next now to assign this to the order type. So you can see the order type is over here in internal order, order master, define order type. So we can go back again to the order type, execute it. So once we execute, you can find your order type 11 or you can even search with the position tab. So that is 1100, enter. This is the order type which we have created. Now we can go to double click on it. So once I double click on to this, now this takes me to the next screen and in that we can uh, have a look over here to the model order and now we can search the list of model order options and in that we can assign our own model order which we have created just now. So this is the model order which we just have created and we can double click on it so as to select it for the internal order type 1100. And now we can save this screen and the model order has been assigned to the order type. So this is how you need to assign the model order to the order type as did. Now once we have done this we can move to the next. So moving up to the next configuration step is creation of internal order groups. Internal order groups is basically a several internal orders are grouped into one order group is known as internal order group to display a certain structure. You can use order groups for number of different purposes as under for planning, overhead calculation, settlement, evaluation in reporting. So these are some of the options where the internal order groups are used and are very helpful. So how we can create an internal order group that is what we will be moving to this particular step and the menu path is on the screen to you which we can create. So we can move up to this uh, controlling internal order and master data. So let's see in internal order we need to go to master data. So we can move to order master data over here. And in order master data, now you can see the next option is a spatial functions and then order group. So we need to search the spatial options now. Okay, we, we need to go to the SAP Easy Access, not the SPRO path. So let's move up to a new session now. So now moving up over here, in this we need to go to accounting. SAP Easy Access as you can see on the heading, accounting, then in that we need to go to controlling and in controlling we need to go to internal orders, then master data and in master data we need to go to spatial functions and within the spatial functions we need to go to order, okay, this is order, we need to go to order group. So within master data we need to go to order group. So this is the path SAP Easy Access, Accounting, Controlling, Internal Order, then Master Data, then Order Group. The transaction code has also been mentioned to you over here which we can take it off and this has already been mentioned on the next line to you. So let's move up to the Order Group. Now we can create this option Create. We can double click onto the Create option and once I click onto the Create option now it take me to the next screen now that is order group. So over here we need to assign the order group number which had to be created. So let's see the order number group which I would be creating is 12001100. So 1200 represent the company code and 1100 represents the real internal order group which is created now on the screen. So once I have assigned the number 
now I can enter on the screen which will take me to the next screen so once I entered it take me to the next screen over here and over here now we can put the description of the group so the description can be taken up as real internal number group so this is the group which has been come has been created as on the system so once we have defined this or even uh, you can have different other groups can be created like uh, uh, there are different internal order groups can be created like for overhead there could be a different group then again we can create more such groups save the screen and the group has been created so this refers to the overhead group that is whatever the internal order which will be used for overhead purposes will be taken up over here or even you can it's up to you how you want to put the description as as per your convenience now I can go back so once I go back even I can create more of such like I can create one two zero zero enter and the second one can be named as uh, like uh, investment or even like production can be given as a one name or another name can be written as projects so that is what can be taken and you can save that screen over here as well so this is how you can create number of different groups as on have created on the screen so once these have been created now we can go back so this is how you just need to create the order group similarly you can go back and you can change the order group as well so we can click on to the change option double click on to the change option it will take you to the change and if you don't know the number the order group number you can go to the list of the order group and you can have a look to that so you can see on the screen the number ranges have been assigned these are the two which we have created less now and apart from that there are number of different groups which is already defined on the system by default so we can go back again suppose I take this projects and now I can enter on the screen so once I enter it is a change option now we can change the description if you want to change and even if you want you want to assign the number ranges uh, the other internal orders to the internal order group as well so this is how the change works and similarly we can go back and we can go to the display option as well so display option is just to display the internal group what is in it and what are the description in it what are the different internal order assigned to the order group that's it so you cannot do any changes to this particular part so these are the three different transactions for internal order group one is to create another is to change and the third one is to display the internal order group part so once we are done with this particular part now we can move up to the next step and that is creation of internal orders internal order means overhead orders it deals with management of overhead of a project or a task internal order is the collector of cost other than the cost center it has a short life compared to a cost center an internal order is a self-contained mini project cost object that is it is a collection of cost but not a full project with WBS that is work breakdown and network relationships the internal order should settle to fixed asset or a project or to the cost or maybe to the profit center at the accounting period and that is the period end one the internal order are used for short term purpose like trade fair job fairs etc whereas the cost center is used for a longer long term purposes to capture the day to day cost so this is the one of the most important master data item that is required for using internal order accounting much of the information required to enter the internal order screen can be filled up on this particular internal order part 
So let's see how we can create an internal order. But before moving to creation of internal order, one must understand that internal order are of two types. One is real order and another is statistical order. Now, real order and a statistical order. Real order gets real postings that uh, whereas statistical order gets statistical that refer basically means that internal order can be posted and accounting entry is generated in case of real orders whereas in case of a statistical order it is only used for information purpose it has no impact on the on the accounting part real order can be used for allocation purposes whereas statistical order cannot be used for allocation purpose a real order has a financial impact because the general ledger receives a posting that is an accounting entry has been generated for a real order part whereas a statistical order does not have any financial impacts so a, a particular internal order can be a real internal order or can be a statistical order uh, order that depends upon how you create that internal order so let's see how we can create an internal order into the SAP system Moving on to the SAP screen now, we will moving up again to the same SAP Easy Access screen that is over here on the screen and we can go to the accounting part then to the internal order and internal order now we can find that uh, there is a master data then a spatial functions then order. So you can see over here in the spatial function we can expand this part and then in that you will find orders and then we can expand it and now you can see over here the option as create so to create an order we need to go to create and we have to double click on to the create option so as I double click on to the create option now so you can see over here you have to assign the order type first so order type is the one which decides that the internal order will be a part of which and the very first part I said that the internal order has to be assigned to the order type. So now we have to assign the internal order which we need to create to the order type. So we can assign the order type over here. The order type which we created in the training session part was 1100. Let's check back the same. So you can see over here, you can search that. So that is it over here 1100 real internal order type 1200. So we can double click on it and we can select this internal order type over here on the screen. Once you have selected the order type now we need to enter on the screen so as to move to the next screen. So once I entered on the screen now I move to the next screen that is the assignment section which determines what organizational units are needed for the internal order to be viable. These assignments are specific for just this one internal order. Whereas the configuration we did for the order type would be reusable in all the different internal orders. So now in this particular option what we need to do is we need to select the object class that is overhead. We need to select the company code and we need to assign the profit center if you know that this particular internal order belongs to a particular profit center in that case you can assign the profit center also but in case the internal order can be used for number of other profit center as well in that case it is suggestible not to assign any profit center to it so it's up to you if you feel that there are number of different profit center that can be used you can use that else you can define the profit center over here So let's see the profit center options. So these are the different profit centers. Suppose I assign a profit center to it. 11000. So once we have assigned these part to it, now we can move on to the next screen. So review your these settings and then complete any fill which is empty that you need to fill it. 
and then we can move on to the next screen that is the control data the rest of the fields as on the assignment field over here on the screen are optional it's up to you if you want to fill these details uh, you can take them over here else you can leave them blank moving to the next is the control data control data ta tab which contains the sections status and the control data requires a bit more review and analysis so in this part what you need to do is you just need to select the uh, currency over here so the currency has been taken up over here as an INR uh, sorry USD and then you can see over here the option over here is statistical order so if you want the internal order to be statistical or a real order for real order you don't have to do anything if you save this is this particular internal order it will be real internal order but if you want this internal order to be a statistical order that is this internal order will be used only for the information purpose it will not have any impact on the on the financial statements or any of the ledger accounts in the FI part so in that case you need to select this statistical order so if you select this statistical order it will be a statistical internal order which will be used only for the information purpose so if you select this now we can move to the next that is period and closing so in the period and closing require a bit more information now that information depends upon the settlement part so that is what will not be doing anything as of now onto that particular option we'll see that later on once we will be on the period and part moving to the next is the general data we don't need anything to be done in that and investment nothing is required so the major option over here is assignment and control data these are the two fields which need to be to be assigned and now we can save the screen and you can see now the internal order has been created so the order was created with number 1001 so this 1001 is the number range which we assign to the order type if you remember from 1001 to 1099 so it is the first number which has been assigned to the internal order now we can move back to the easy access path now once you have created the internal order and in case you want to change anything in the internal order we can move with the change option over here we can double click on to the change and then you can just you can take the internal order number on the screen over here and enter on the screen so once we enter it will display you all the informations as defined while creating the internal order and in case you want to change anything in these details or anywhere on the other parts of different tabs you can make the relevant changes as required else we can go back and you can save this screen so whatever needful changes needed you can do that so you can define the internal order description over here as well as you can see on the screen so suppose I give the description to this internal order as uh, um, project 1000 or you can name it as project ABC so this is a project ABC for which I have created an internal order and I will look after to the project what are the different expenses been held on it so we can save this screen now and the changes have been made now we can go back and even the same way we can move up to the display option over here as well and we can double click onto the display now and it will display you the internal order enter so you can see now this is in the display mode this is just for the information purpose that you can display the internal order what are the different master data informations which have been filled in the internal order but you cannot make any changes to it so this is how we have covered the internal order part and we'll be we'll be moving on to the next configuration steps now here on in the next training session Till now you can go through all these configuration steps in the system and we'll see you in the next training session. Thank you.